Welcome back. Last week we finished shaping the blade almost entirely, so this week we're going to get to jump straight into heat treating it. And there's some unique challenges with that because it's very, very thin blade and the tip is very, very fragile. So we're going to have to be really careful with that and keep our fingers crossed. Let's get into it. Some of you may have noticed when you heat steel up, it changes colors. It gets a sort of onyx gray or even a black coating on it. That coating is actually oxidation. We want to prevent the blade from oxidizing. So here I've mixed up some satanite clay with regular tap water. And I'm putting a very, very thin coat on the blade and letting it fully dry. And that'll protect us a little bit from the oxidation while we heat treat it. This is my new Hell's Forge. You can see me setting this up in a video a few months ago if you're interested. It's just a propane forge and we're going to use that to first normalize the blade. Normalizing the blade allows the crystalline structure of the steel to become a little more regular and that reduces the chance of stress fractures and warps when we quench the blade. In the open exposed area of the forge, there's actually hot spots and cool spots. And we want a very even consistent temperature. So I'm adding a steel pipe here and that'll give us a chamber with a little more of a homogeneous temperature. We are at our target temperature of 1550 degrees. So we will add our dagger and let it soak at that temperature for 10 minutes. Then we will remove it and let it cool off to room temperature. We'll do that complete cycle three times. You can tell how even the temperature is inside the pipe by how even the color is all the way down the length of the blade. This is our final heat, so we'll remove it one last time and let it cool down to room temperature. And once we remove the satanite clay from the blade, you can tell just how little oxidation was able to develop on the blade while it soaked. This piece of steel here was in the forge for about the same amount of time. It was what was holding up the blade. You can see how much more oxidation is on it. And we're adding a fresh layer of satanite clay. This time we're doing it thicker and concentrating it on the spine of the knife. And that's because we want that to cool slower when we quench the blade. That will make that section softer and more flexible. We're going to be using canola oil to do the quench. There are oils you can buy that are manufactured just for quenching, but they're very expensive. And we're doing a 1095 blade, and canola oil is pretty forgiving on 10 series steel. We don't want our canola oil to be at room temperature when we do our quench. We want it to be at about 140 degrees. So a piece of hot rebar will get us there. Our target temperature for the quench is 1475. And that's just slightly hotter than when the steel becomes non-magnetic. So you may see me tapping a magnet against the blade to check it. And we want our temperature to be very even and the tip heats up very quickly. So here I'm leaving the tip exposed to the air to let it cool off, trying to get a very even color all the way down the length of the blade. And we are non-magnetic and we have a very even temperature, so we are ready to do this. Thank you. 
to check for hardness, I'm going to run a file down the tang, which was unhardened. And you can see that it kind of bites into the metal. Across the blade, though, you can see the file just skates right across, showing us that we successfully hardened the blade. If you strain the canola oil when you're done, put it back in the bottle and back in the pantry, no one will ever know you used it. After cleaning all the clay off, I realized the tip had a little bit of bend to it. It warped a little bit. That was probably when I banged it against the side of the quench tank. If I try to fix that now, it would probably crack. So we're going to wait till after the tempering cycle. First step of that is to remove the oxidation off the blade so we can see the color of the bare steel. To temper it, you can pop it in your regular oven in your kitchen and set it to about 525. There's a little bit of variance on that, depending on how hard you want it. And then you just let it wait for two hours. When it's done, you pop it out and let it cool off to room temperature. And then you do one more complete cycle of that. He cleaned the steel off earlier, so now we can see the temper colors, that royal blue color all the way down the length of the blade, so we know it worked. Next up is to fix that bent tip, and since it's tempered now, we don't have to worry as much about that breaking off while we work on it. That looks pretty good. I really thought I was going to break it off, but it looks great. That is it for this week. We pretty much are done with the blade. And next week we're going to get to work on the grip. If you'd like to see that, hit the subscription button, notification bell, and we'll see you then.